Okay, so let's move on to our post route. And basically to post something, what we want to do is actually take what we're receiving in the request body, and then we're going to insert that into the database, right? So what we can first do is we can take our to-do from the, the request body. Okay, and that just saves that in the variable. And this is also going to be async. And we will try, do our try catch. Same deal here. Just console log error for now. Try db users dot insert. We want to await dot insert to do. So connects gives us this dot insert function or method. Um, that will actually insert in this into the database for us. Okay, and if that's successful, we want to do response.json with a message. And then there we go, that really should be it. So what we can do, let's switch this to post, post to do's, and we'll send, well, we have to, of course, have to start the server first. That helps. Send. And you notice we're just spinning here. We're just spinning, 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 spinning. And the reason for that is because we haven't sent a request body with it. And on top of that, we haven't told this what to do if there is no request body. So what we can do is if not to do, return we want to return here because if this is the case we want to just short circuit everything uh, that happens after you know that comes after that we don't want any of that code to execute so we want to say return response.json you must include a to do in your request so you want to kind of give the user some useful information here right and to make this a little nicer, we'll say, we'll actually add a status message, response.status 400, which means bad request. And if we try this again, and it really helps if you put the correct, uh, the correct table name here, and so your errors will tell you, no such table users. So let's save. Okay, so we're gonna do a little debugging on the fly here. So we can console.log to do, okay, because this is not working the way we want it to, but that's okay, that's part of web development. Okay, so you'll see here, it logged this for us. So this logic, if to do evaluates to falsy, then do this is not going to work because we're showing up as an empty object and actually an empty object does not evaluate to be falsy. So what we can do is actually let's destructure the message because that's the only thing we're actually going to be sending, right? The ID is going to be handled by the database so we don't have to worry about putting an ID in there but we can pull this message out of here. And so we update this here. So if we don't have the message, we'll send that, um, we will short circuit and we'll send this error message. Okay, so let's make this a little more clear. You must send a message in your request. So they know you need, a, you need an item with a key of message that has a value. Okay, and then we will update this. We'll send it as an object. We'll send it as an object 
And essentially what this is, this is this is pretty much shorthand for message is message. So whatever the value of message is here is gonna be the value here. But we can write it shorthand. Let's go back to insomnia and let's add a body. We want this JSON. And JSON is always started, is always enclosed in curly braces and each key value pair is has to be enclosed in double quotes unless the value is a number, in which case it doesn't have to be in quotes, but no single quotes. So it will look like this message is get the post route working. Okay, now let's see what happens when we send this. And let's uh, erase our console log there because it doesn't know what to do is. Let's see in our error here, to do is not defined. There we go. And so you notice we're getting a status 200. We actually want to modify that, right? Because 200 is okay. That, that's usually what you send back. If someone is just trying to get some information, you send them a 200 response. But if someone's actually creating a record, then you want to send them a 201. So we'll we'll uh, update that here. So we'll say response dot status 201 dot json to do successfully stored. And now next thing we want to do is let's uh, let's update our to dos. Actually, before that, just so we can make sure that um, we actually are. Um, we actually did save this one to the database. Let's go ahead and get our to-dos. There we go. So next thing is let's actually update one of our to-dos. So as usual, this will be an async function. We'll have a try catch. Okay, so since we're trying to update a singular item in the database, the first thing we have to do is actually find that item. And if you remember, whatever we put here in the URL after to do's uh, forward slash is going to be the ID. So we can use that to actually look up the proper entry. So we'll say const current to do equals await db to do's so you remember this is shorthand for get get all entries from the to do's database and then we also have a dot where method and then we can pass some sort of some sort of evaluating statement into this so okay so we'll say where the ID is ID. So to get that ID, we have a params object from our request. Okay, and connects is also very, is nice enough to also give us the update function. And we want to update it with the message. It changes to a put and add a few extra exclamation points. 404 not count. Well, that's because we didn't add the ID. So this was ID 5, remember? Okay, we're getting an error here. I think we just had a syntax error here. <laughs> And you know what? It really helps if you actually send a response. So this one will give a 200 because we're not creating new a new record. We're just updating one. So 200 is fine. On this one, let's say message update successful. Uh, 
Okay, and one last thing. This actually should be destructured as well because this request.params is an object. So we need to pull the ID out of there. Right. And so when we go back here, let's add like 12 exclamation points. And let's make this a put. Send. Update successful. A little sanity check. There we go. Okay, so now we've updated successfully our to do. And I think we can even just copy this. Okay. Um, and then the as far as the ID, we don't really have to check for that because since it's in the URL, if this is not there, you're the you're gonna get a 404 anyway. So that one's okay. All right, and lastly, so the hard part's out of the way. Those are the hard ones. And delete is very much like the put, except just the action that we perform is gonna be different, right? So we can actually pretty much copy all of this. Okay, so we don't need the message because we won't be sending a message. We'll only need the ID. And we don't need the update, but we will change this to delete. Okay. And we'll say delete successful. Okay, and then let's make this an async. All right, let's get rid of all this. We don't need that right now. And let's delete item five. Delete successful. So we'll get, here we go. And as a little bonus, you know what? I always like to have a get by ID. So let's copy this. We'll add an ID here and we can say very close to this. Okay, and we'll say where ID, of course, our ID comes from the request.rams. Let's save this in a variable. Make this a 200 and we'll actually send the current to do. Let's save, we're not getting any errors. And let's get item three. Here we go. Five, what was that? Five is an empty object, so we can add a two. Okay, we got two. So, so current to do current to do dot length equal to zero response dot status 404 dot json to do not found Otherwise, do this. There we go. For, there we go. Call your mom. Always forget that one. Okay. There we have it. We have all 
We have actually five working endpoints now. It's pretty cool. Okay, we got our remaining endpoints built out. We have our post, we have our put, and we have our delete routes. So we're able to update, create, and delete now. And then we also threw in a fifth endpoint, which is a get by ID, which is super useful. If you're trying to get a singular to do item. We have gotten all those endpoints tested out through Insomnia, through our REST client, Insomnia. And on the next video, which I hope to be the last video, uh, we're actually going to go back and pull up our React app again and modify those calls. We're going to use a dependency for our fetching called Axios, which really helps us with HTTP requests. And we're going to modify those where we're actually going to be calling to the database instead of just using local storage. All right, I'll see you on the next video.